O come, O come, Emmanuel, God with us. Welcome. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, thank you for worshipping with us today. Let us prepare our hearts and homes for the arrival of Christ, who brings comfort and joy to all. This is the third week of Advent, when we light three candles on the Advent wreath. You might also want to light three candles as we begin our prayers. First, we lit a candle for the patriarchs and matriarchs. Then the candle of the prophets. The third candle represents the angels announcing Jesus' birth to Mary and Joseph and good news to the shepherds. The angels also share a warning for the Holy Family to flee into Egypt. As we light these three candles we sing, Advent candles tell their story. grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and, and also, also with, you. with you. A voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your Son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right, with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Let us hear the ancient stories of God's people from Scripture, not as events in the past, but as stories that shine light onto God's activity in our lives today. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Jesus Christ. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, No, I'm not. 
are you the prophet? He, sa- he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who send us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are if you're neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the tongue of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptized. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Who are you? A very simple question to which we expect a simple answer. And if somebody would ask us this question, we would probably start by giving them our name. Now, John was also confronted with this question, but he does not simply answer by giving his name. On the contrary, he immediately goes straight to the core of that question. I am not the Messiah. John points away from himself. He refers to the one who comes after him, the bringer of peace, the light in the dark. And who are we? What about us, Christians in 2020? We can ask ourselves this question, or this question could be asked to us. Do our lives testify to that light? Are we bringers of peace? And why do we as Christians sometimes find it hard to set our lamp on the stand so that it burns for everyone? To answer all these questions, let us take a closer look at what is meant by the light and the darkness. Last year I went on a trip to South Africa and I was fascinated by an excerpt from Nelson Mandela's speech at his inauguration as president in 1994. He then spoke the following words, and I quote, Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frighten us. We ask ourselves often, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented or fabulous? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. We are born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. The liberation of our own fear liberates others." End quote. Now this sounds maybe a bit confusing when Mandela says that we are more afraid of the light than the darkness. But what does it mean when we hear the words within and hear Mandela contrast the light with darkness? Now it is because of our understanding of these words in a very individualistic way. These days we hear such a lot about making our own individual light shine in the world. Just think of the many advertisements and slogans from different companies, or even university, which bombard us. For example, be yourself, be the best version of yourself. You alone are worth it. Be the person you decide to be. It is better to be hated for what you are than to be loved for what you are not. And so on and so on. Now the thing is, When we hear these words within and our own light, we might think that this is all about self-created light. 
But as a Christian community, we need to think about these words from a community perspective. In other words, the light of God shines in each of us together, not each of us separately. We see this in the Gospels all the time. John the Baptist refers to Jesus. Jesus refers to the Father. The Spirit of God creates that fellowship. And the Son, sent by the Father, shows that we are a part of this and that we can shine that same light. It is therefore that God can say to each of us, You are my son, or you are my daughter, in whom I am well pleased. Now, just as our own light can only be understood collectively, the same goes for the darkness. Our dark side often emerges from living together, and this dark side often flows from the desire to have what the others have, or even worse, wanting to be like the other person. It puts us in conflict with each other, with ourselves, and in the end, with God. This desire to be like the other means that we are no longer God's brilliant or gorgeous, talented or fabulous children, each in their own way. No, we often think that the other person is better and we want to be just like them. And when this doesn't work, it's better to crush that person. So we have no rival anymore. We are not born with this darkness inside us. It's born out of the way in which we live together. We envy each other's gifts and talents, instead of using our own gifts for the sake of God's loving world. So when we talk about the light again, it is that light that John testifies to, the light of Christ's coming into that darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. This is the good news of Christmas, which we are now preparing for. It is that God's love for us is made manifest in Christ, who stands before us and tries to bring us comfort when the world can feel so cold. Even if this love is in danger of being completely destroyed on the cross, that love is made manifest in that dazzling light that shines on Easter morning. It is the light in any one of us who believes that that light ultimately has the final say. Now, the letter reminds me of a song that is often sung in the community of Taizé. Within our darkest night, you kindle the fire that never dies away. So who are we? And what do we choose? Darkness or light? We are all children of God, made to reflect His glory by learning to live that love, to shine that light together. So during this time of Advent, we give thanks for God's light, the light that our Lord comes to share with us, so that we together, not as rivals, but as members of human community, might be God's loving work and dazzling light in this world. Peace and blessings. Know that you are loved. We have heard God's word. Now let it change us to reflect his light in our own lives. Through prayer and song we ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy Spirit, help us to be watchful during this time of Advent. Help us now to pray with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer. That God may bring in his kingdom with justice and mercy. We pray for our church community here in Ghent, for Stephen, our chaplain, for Pastor Yoyan, and for each person who serves the church and each person who serves outside the church here, that we may all see more of your kingdom come in this place. Let us pray to the Lord. That God may establish his scepter of righteousness among the nations. As the transition period following Britain's exit from the European Union draws to a close, we pray for politicians on all sides who are deciding the next steps. Will you give them wisdom, integrity and the desire to seek the common good? We pray for those who are anxious, for businesses affected by Brexit, for hauliers, for people on low incomes who struggle to pay for food, for the people of Northern Ireland, and for people in Belgium who have children studying in the UK, elderly parents or other family members there. Let us pray to the Lord. in the scriptures and recognize him in our brothers and sisters around the world. We pray today for the Serbian Orthodox Church amid the passing of Patriarch Irene who died last month aged 90 after testing positive for COVID-19. We pray for your people there Lord as his successor is elected and we ask that your Holy Spirit will guide them in the way of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. That God may bind up the brokenhearted, heal the sick, and restore all who have fallen. Today we pray especially for Pierre Alain, Bridget, Elizabeth, Christopher, Carlos, Alain, Kristin, Thomas, Isabel, Kingsley, Hans, Brian, Pete, Jan, Jacqueline, Andre, John, Dominique, Hirt, Patrick, Ingrid, and Danny. We pray too for all victims of coronavirus and their families. We thank you, Lord, for the vaccines that have been developed. And we pray that people will be wise and stay safe as they await the arrival of the vaccine programme. Let us pray to the Lord.
of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and the shadow of death. We pray for all those experiencing the darkness of loneliness or depression at this time. In our prayers for the mission to seafarers, we pray for children of seafarers who do not see their parents for months on end and for those who will not see them this Christmas. We pray especially for seafarers and their families in Wellington, New Zealand. And we continue to pray for ministry in the port of Ghent. Let us pray to the Lord. today Saint Lucy whose Saints Day falls today and with all the Saints in light that we may shine forth as lights for the world. We pray for the work of the Leprosy Mission. With them we thank you for the thousands of people across the world following Christ's example and caring for those affected by leprosy. We ask that we also would be Christ-centred and that we would show your light in these dark times. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all those for whom we have prayed today, whether spoken or unspoken, for the mercy and protection of our Heavenly Father, that we may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you, our God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. As we anticipate the coming of our Savior, let us pray with confidence in whatever language we choose, as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, in the heaven. Jesus, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
We go now with God's blessing, carrying his light and love in all we say and do. With love and compassion, come, Lord Jesus. With judgment and mercy, come, Lord Jesus. In power and glory, come, Lord Jesus. In wisdom and truth, come, Lord Jesus. Holy One, make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in in love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.